Joining us right now is the former VC of Niti Aayog, Mr. Rajiv Kumar. Thank you very much, Mr. Kumar, for joining us. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, you see, while uh, the government is happy about the fact that uh, the GDP numbers are high, uh, it's happy about the fact that, uh, you know, taxation revenue is going up, GST collection is going up. These are positive signs and positive cues. But while all of that is the positive story, there is a current of our, uh, account trade and fiscal deficit, which is a huge threat for us. Uh, inflation remains a huge concern. And now, uh, as the newspaper reported, there are some headwinds we need to be prepared for. What's your assessment about the Indian economy? My assessment about the Indian economy, Saket, is that um, uh, we cannot, we are not, we are not isolated, as some people would tend to believe, mm -hmm. from all that's happening in the global economy. And we know that um, this is an unprecedented synchronized downturn in the global economy that's taking place uh, with North America, Europe, China, all, uh, you know, seeing dramatic reduction in their uh, growth, in their growth, including recession, both, uh, you know, which is now looming in Europe and uh, the U.S. And, but we probably are the one bright spot in this gloomy uh, global environment because we still, despite, for example, the World Bank cutting its estimate of our growth rate, it's still six and a half percent, which everybody else would sort of really, uh, you know, give their left leg for. Uh, our next year's growth is also five and a half percent. And therefore, we remain a very good story as far as uh, foreign investors are concerned and as far as global economy observers are concerned. Now, about the twin deficit that you're talking about, yeah. the current account deficit and the fiscal deficit, I am not so concerned about the fiscal deficit because, as you said, the GST revenues are buoyant. Uh, the government has enough fiscal space. Uh, the non the non tax revenues uh, th that can be another focus of the government, you know, to 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 to, to give themselves more uh, fiscal space than they needed, and it can be done even now. On the on the current account on the external side, I think there is now. Uh, what is required is far bigger focus on how to uh, push our exports hmm. in an environment where demand, external demand, uh, would be going down. So how to raise our market share in the global economy. Hmm. Hmm. And okay. the, and rather, rather than grow only with the global economy. Which no, is fair, fair enough. So what I'm going to do, Mr. Kumar, is that uh, through the course of our conversation, we're going to break this down into specifics and maybe you can tell me uh, what your view is. So first of all, inflation and price rise. Uh, do you feel that we have done enough when there will be these headwinds or there will be a global crisis and of course uh, we will not remain fully untouched? Have we done enough to be able to contain this? You see, the problem about this statement is that you don't know what is enough until it is enough. Mm. Therefore, you can't really you know, anticipate this. Let us put it like this, that the RBI is seized of the matter. The Monetary Policy Committee is very conscious of it. And the fact that they have been, uh, they have been uh, front loading their interest rates, uh, you know, interest rate hikes, uh, shows that they are prepared to do whatever is required to be done. And my own estimate is that inflationary expectations are not yet completely sort of rooted as it were. They have not taken root in this country. Because if you look at the for any survey, etc., the consumer and the investors, they are not expecting this inflation to rise any further. Now, that's the real crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, and that starts to happen. But then that becomes, that gets cascading down. So from what I can see uh, on inflation control, inflation, reigning in inflation, the RBI is doing the right things. And moreover, more than the interest rate hikes, if you if you if you observe the liquidity conditions in the market today, for the first time liquidity liquidity is tight, so that the actual interest rate is higher than what the repo rate uh, would would imply. Hmm. So which means that you know that impact will come through, and demand both investment and consumption demand will begin to soften, which is the condition for. Getting inflation under control. Sure. Mr. Kumar, you know, one, one uh, uh, attached aspect to price rise and inflation is also, uh, you know, how 
fuel prices for the common mm. man have not gone down uh, when you compare it to the, the crude oil bill. So crude oil rates are at a pre-war level and yet the, the fuel price is not any, any low for the people. Now this was a benefit that could have been passed on to the people. Do you think that the government must think along these lines? That would depend upon the fiscal space you have, hmm. because passing on that uh, particular, uh, you know, reduction is, is, you know, to the consumer uh, necessarily implies a reduction in the taxes that are levied by the central government and the state governments. The finance minister had done that and had asked the state governments to match. Some of them had matched it. But again, this is a fine balance that people strike, whether you have enough fiscal balance, because you can't possibly let the fiscal deficit rise from the targeted budget figure of, I think, 6.3%. But if it does, then the combined fiscal deficit of the center and the states goes beyond double digits. You know, you know to that effect, that Mr. Kumar, the, sorry? The, the many members uh, uh, in the opposition who understand uh, a thing or two about economy say that the taxes of the center on fuel have been increased so phenomenally none of these taxes ever existed in the past. Like, for instance, central excise is uh, at a whopping high, all-time high. So you're collecting more taxes. Some even no, call it lazy is, taxation. I don't know whether it's lazy taxation because that was done when the prices had declined very rapidly. So the government wanted to take uh, some benefit of the windfall gains that were happening. And, and, and just as you uh, we said, we discussed, because the finance minister has reduced these taxes in the recent past, I'm sure this is on the government's policy agenda, that if inflation remains as, you know, sort of, uh, you know, as um, uh, entrenched, if you like, and the fuel and fuel, uh, fuel and food components are a very high percentage of the total inflation, I'm sure the government will be ready uh, to reduce uh, that tax, those taxation. But what the government has done is to ensure getting the, getting oil at a much cheaper price than what is available in the world market by entering into the bilateral agreement with Russia. And that, I think, uh, is, 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 is a quite an, uh, something that one should take note of and, and you, give credit. Mm -hmm. You think, uh, you know, speaking of unemployment, because just a short while ago, we were talking about price rise and, uh, uh, you know, we look at this as a sort of a double whammy. Price rise on one end and unemployment at, uh, at a high. You look at states like Bihar, 11.4%, Goa, 10.9%, Haryana, 22% plus, Jammu Kashmir, 23% plus. Uh, do you feel that this is one area where the government can look into along with states? Absolutely. And I've been emphasizing this. And I think this is the recent paper that I wrote, uh, an article that I wrote in the Economic Times, which is saying that the informal sector, the small and medium enterprise, have taken a much bigger hit uh, during the pandemic and the Ukraine-Russia conflict than the corporate, the large corporate sector. And the, the K-shaped recovery is actually a reality. And I give you a small example of so, sort of thing that the government can do, which is, you know, and yesterday uh, they met me, the, you know, the Bharatiya Swarnakar Sangh is an is a association of all the artisans in the gems and jewelry industry, you know, which, we, you know, which make golden, you know, you know uh, ornaments and so on. And they were saying that if the mudra loan could be given to us, not in 10 lakhs rupees, but in terms of the gold, you know, 200 grams of gold, that will help them a lot mm. because that will then take care of the gold inflation. Now, these are sort of specific steps that the government needs sure. to take to assist the small and medium enterprises at this stage, because it's quite clear that the small and medium enterprises, especially those who don't have access to formal commercial credit, have taken a real big hit, yeah. uh, you know, much bigger than what has been done by the big listed companies okay. and the big corporates. Rajiv Kumarji, yeah, now I want to talk about the rupee. You know, uh, again, politically speaking, and I don't want you to answer the political questions, but uh, it's said that uh, we have a fumbling response to a tumbling rupee. It is at an all-time low from 74 dollars to 82 uh, rupees, uh, beg your pardon, 82 rupees to a dollar. The rupee is down 10% and this despite the RBI's sales to prop up the currency. Foreign exchange reserves are falling to save the rupee. It is at a nearly two-year low. 
Do you see this as a worrying sign? Forex reserves are also down 14% this year. Yeah, but Sakit, you know better than I do that our rupee has depreciated much less than the other currencies around the world against like the dollar. The king dollar has actually outs. You know, it is amazing that despite you know uh, whatever the you know uh, you can say about the US economy, but when the Fed raises interest rates, there is a flight to safety, and that flight to safety is much less in our case than in the case of you know all other economies, including Japan, which had to intervene you know to uh, to to try and you know, stop the depreciation of the yen, etc. China too, a much bigger depreciation than what you've had. So that's one that's one point that I want to make. The second is that I have been always a proponent of a a non uh, a proponent of a rupee finding its own level and not be artificially raised because that hurts our exporters and that also you know encourages imports, whether that's of luxury travel or luxury goods or, or energy consumption. So I think a weak rupee may sound, you know, I mean, may make for good English of tumbling and stumbling, but a weak rupee <laughs> is one of the drivers hmm. of, uh, you know, of uh, uh, a growth, a driver of growth in the economy. And by the way, if you if you get your exports going, especially those which are produced by our artisans and handicrafts, etc., then you create, you generate employment in the right places. So I'm not worried. I'm not a worried man about the repeat depreciation because I don't believe in being macho. Okay, but would you be worried about the fact that the service sector has uh, growth has hit a six month low in September? Yeah. And this, uh, you know, when you juxtapose this with the World Bank cutting India's FY23 growth forecast by 1% and uh, revising it, this is in, in fact uh, not the first revision. Even the RBI has revised. Yes. So I, I, first, coming to the uh, you know to your uh, thing about the, um, what the the first one was about um, uh, service sector. Growth. Sorry, service uh, sector growth. Service sector. You know, it's come down from fifty eight to fifty seven or fifty six. Above fifty still implies high growth. You know, so we're not into a you know we are making. I don't know why we're making into a crisis. If it, was, it was as high as 58.6%. You must recall that a couple, few, few months ago, our manufacturing PMI was below 50, and then it's risen to above 50. So 56 is not a bad number. Service sector is going to expand, and our services are the bigger drivers of our economic growth. So, uh, you know, let's not create a crisis where there is none. On the reduction in the growth rate, as I said, it's clear that those who have argued about India being isolated or what is that word that they, they use decoupled mm. from the global economy. I mean, they were talking through their hat and, and therefore there's no decoupling. But the fact that it's still six and a half, as I said earlier to begin with, mm. anybody that I've met says that this is the brightest spot as it were today in the global economy. Sure. All right. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Take care.